And so today we're going to be talking about is the first ever book review that I'm doing, and it's Robert Greene's Laws of Human Nature. Now, if you've checked out any of Robert Greene's books, he talks about power, he talks about mastery, he talks about human nature, and he talks about a few other subjects that you can look into. And the nice thing about Robert Greene is that if you're looking for stories, he has stories. If you're looking for information, he has information placed in categories, so at least... When, when you have no idea what's going on. Okay, what is this thing called human nature, you know? Or, or what, what, what are some principles that I can easily take and, and get a better understanding or at least a template for me to go out and do some more research or uh, look up and, you know, have a template for me to be like, oh, now I know what I'm looking for instead of just kind of being in this airy-fairy philosophy, uh, not philosophy, uh, psychology and not knowing where to look next, okay? So he, he makes these categories, right? Uh, he puts specific categories and interpretations of behavior based on historical people, okay? So you can look at the story, and then he has an interpretation. So basically, his synthesized principle or wisdom that he was able to glean from that story or glean from just analyzing hundreds of stories like that, and I hit the microphone, uh, hundreds of stories like that where that particular trait is similar, okay? And one of the main components in the laws of human nature that's really nice is that there are a couple pages where he has these categories uh, if you look through the book and you look for the in bold uh, titles like the uh, like um oh, what is it so he puts he puts um, categories of people based on the the cuz he in this book a lot of the stuff is based on early childhood models so basically their parents right their parents and their parents model behavior that is duplicated in the kid and then that kid over time replicates that same scenario over and over and over either in a good way that allows him or her to be majorly successful in what they want to do and accomplish their purpose, or it becomes a detriment where they're trying to relive their childhood trauma so that their mind can synthesize and process and be able to recover and heal from it. Because pain is, is nothing just uh, telling you that something's wrong. And then now we have to be the gardener or the doctor that puts all the things in place so that we can heal, right? So that we can uh, at least, because there's always stuff, right? There's always stuff that we're dealing with. There's always stuff underneath the surface that might not be as good as we want it. So all we have to do is just go from one step to the next, to the next, to the next. And over time, we'll be able to synthesize more of ourselves, you know, basically instead of having, you know, isolated, demarcated, separated parts of ourselves, we integrate it and we become fully integrated. And that's a concept that was talked about in this book. Um, we also have to realize that in the book he also talked about uh, basically all the negative aspects and all the positive aspects should have should be should be combined together. You know, there's a lot of people that hide their ne negative aspects to seem better than they are, or to seem like they're good because that's how their needs were met when they were a kid, right? To seem like they're good because you know these aspects weren't favorable, even though they're totally necessary in order to get what you want, in order to be considered authentic. Because people can people can tell when you're being authentic or not, right? They just don't feel comfortable around you. Um, they they you know or or you don't want to share too much, right? And that that might be good, that might be bad. But the thing is, is that if you're pretending to be something that you're not, chances are you're not going to be the next greatest innovator or somebody that really changes that dynamic on the on, in the world. Okay, uh, and usually, you know, if you look at the story of Steve Jobs, which you talked about in the book, he was a very eccentric, a lot of negative traits, and a lot of positive traits, but a lot of negative traits. But he was a whole person. Right, he was he was perfectly coherent. All those principles were perfectly coherent with the goal that he wanted, and that was to create uh, the platform for everybody to be on. Right, he wanted to create the real estate that everything that all the software would live on, and it would be in your phone, and you'd take it everywhere, and you wouldn't live without it. That's what he wanted. That was his principle. That was his 
core mission and objective. Okay? And, and he used these negative, super hyper-aggressive tendencies, but also these positive aspects of being a visionary and uh, to basically create something great, okay? And the thing is, is that when you're the whole self and you take all these aspects and you put them together, everything becomes stronger. Because imagine if you have the totality of everything, <laughs> you know, if you have you know, basically, if you have a spectrum, right, an infinite spectrum, and you only pick one specific segment to use, that's not nearly as powerful as the totality, right? And now, what if you got the totality and you focused it on one specific point, one specific core objective? You become very, very, very powerful like that. If you're focused on one objective and everything, the aggressive, the negative, the, the, uh, the, the, the angry, <laughs> uh, every single emotion, every single impulse, every single thought, idea, complex, person, relationship, uh, body twitch, you know, <laughs> everything's cur perfectly congruent with what you want or that singular objective and it's laser focused. You're not a light bulb. You're not a 5-watt light bulb that doesn't do anything. You're a 5-watt laser that can burn through anything. You can burn through, you know, you can burn through doors. You can burn through steel doors. Uh, well, depends how focused the laser is. The more focused the laser, it doesn't matter about how powerful it is. It just matters how focused it is. That's what determines the laser power. It's qualitative, not quantitative. You can have the same powered laser, same powered source emission or whatever point it and then focus it even more focus it so finely that it just drills a hold right through anything so wisdom is about making everything everything that we believe everything that we think everything that we know into a co into a coherent laser pointed towards wisdom Right? And wisdom is good. What From wisdom, we actually know what good is. Um, so it has to be pointed towards wisdom. Because from wisdom, we realize what is good and what is not. And then we slowly grow, we slowly change, and we slowly uh, exemplify the good that we see. Right, And then as soon as our wisdom increases to the point where we know that something is no longer good, no longer, no longer as, as good as something else, then we personify that. And in reality, we're not just personifying the good, we're person personifying the totality of all the possibilities and just picking and making distinguish of the best ones for us. Now, does that mean the negation of the other ones are different or, or bad or evil? Well, for what we want and what we want to see in the world, picking the ones that are most in line with that wisdom that we have is best. Simple as that. And that was kind of a side tangent off this, but this is a really interesting book. But the nice part about it is that you can literally go to Barnes & Noble, flip through it, see the bold text or the cursive or the, uh, the um, uh, what would it be, italicized text. And you can read that and find which one, which category represents you the most. And then it will tell you what kind of happened, which will be pretty much pretty close. You know, of course, there's variations in different modalities, but at least you get a baseline of where we're at, right? And that's what's useful about this book. It tells you or shows you at least, you know, the beginning steps of, okay, so how did this experience or how did this collection of experiences equal this? Or how do I see this rhyme scheme going forward how does this keep you know projecting into the future for some reason and it will give you some wonderful categories to work with that then you can go into the psychology department or the uh, psychoanalytic uh, science area of your local library or you go to a university library which is usually better um, and and you just tear through those books with uh, speed reading you just tear through those books trying to see, okay, yeah, and then and then when you f and then the thing is, is that most of this is like, of course you'll feel sad. You're like, man, 
you'll realize some things and then you'll feel sad. That's why we, a lot of people use, uh, you know, use certain activities to medicate themselves, uh, like smoking, drinking, uh, um, uh, various other addictions, right? They use that to medicate themselves so they don't feel the pain. And probably the next video I'm going to be talking about is Ernest Jünger's On Pain, but it's going to be a different take. Uh, it's not going to be what Ernest Jünger thinks. Of course, that's that would not be true. But the thing is, is that if we feel that pain, it's an indication that something's wrong. So what we do is that we develop strategies to heal what's what's underneath, what the pain, what's causing the pain, and then we are free of it. Because we, we should like pain. Pain is good because it tells us what's wrong so that we can fix it. If we become addicted to fixing, once we have pain, we fix it, and that it's a good kind of pain, and we keep fixing it, it will help us get to the next level of where we want to go. It will help our relationships last longer. It will help our relationships actually start out on the good foot or actually find people that are good for us, you know, or at least better than you know, what we've had or we have a certain rhyme scheme that's happening in our past that we don't want to repeat anymore that isn't productive for us. And we can synthesize it. So I hope you like this video. Uh, it's getting kind of dark out, so kind of wrap it up here. But that was my first book review on the laws of human nature. Uh, if you want any other book reviews, please write it down or share it with me in the comments and I'll check it out and uh, work some things out. Maybe I'll look into a few uh, biographies or some other things and, and uh, share some with you. All right, take care, guys. Bye.